Good afternoon, gardeners. It's Sunday, May 2nd. It's a gorgeous day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today I'm going to make a statement that will turn a lot of heads. I'm going to give you five reasons why determinate tomatoes are better than indeterminate tomatoes and why the bulk of the tomatoes that you are growing in your garden should be determinate varieties, not indeterminates. I've been growing tomatoes in my garden for as long as I can remember, but up until three years ago, I had never grown a determinate tomato. I only grew indeterminates, and I imagine a lot of you are the same way for probably the same reason. And the story goes something like this. There are so many indeterminate tomatoes out there that are exciting. There are old heirloom indeterminates. There are ones of interesting shapes. There are countless colors from greens and yellows and pinks to striped tomatoes to variegated tomatoes tomatoes. Indeterminate tomatoes are so exciting and interesting. Why would I go and buy determinate tomatoes? They are so boring. They're just plain old red orbs that could be grown in any commercial growing operation. Why would I want to grow them? So because of that logic, I never grew determinate tomatoes. They seemed really boring to me. And it is true that there are many more indeterminate varieties of tomatoes out there, and there are more interesting, unique indeterminates. However, determinate tomatoes do one thing far better than indeterminate tomatoes do. Can you guess what that is? Grow tomatoes. And at the end of the day, the real reason why we are growing tomato plants is to grow tomatoes on those plants and eat them. I'm not saying you shouldn't grow indeterminate tomatoes. What I'm saying is determinate tomatoes should make up the bulk of your planting and you should grow indeterminate sparingly for interest because you get those really cool unique varieties. So now I'm going to give you five reasons why that is the case. The first reason why determinate tomatoes are better than indeterminate tomatoes is because they are smaller. An indeterminate tomato will grow indeterminately because they are a vine type. So they can grow six to eight feet or larger in a single growing season. Determinate tomatoes, on the other hand, grow to a predetermined size, hence the name determinate. So most determinate varieties will only grow to be about 30 inches tall, meaning that they're much easier to manage and you can fit them much more compactly. Now in my garden, I use four foot by 10 foot raised beds. So each bed has a total surface area of 40 square feet. With indeterminate tomatoes, I need to block out a two by two section or four square feet for each tomato. So in a bed this size, I can only grow about 10 indeterminate tomatoes. The determinants, on the other hand, I only need to give them 1.5 feet by 1.5 feet or 2.25 square feet. So that means I can easily grow 18 tomato plants in the same space, which means I can almost fit double the number of tomato plants in the exact same growing area. This size factor is even more limiting when you're growing in containers. Determinate varieties are a much better choice for container gardening because you need much smaller containers. Indeterminate tomatoes, in my experience, require a minimum 20 gallon growing size in order to have enough space. Determinate tomatoes, on the other hand, like this small Celeste determinate tomato, are perfectly happy in a seven gallon grow bag. And as you can see, it is absolutely loaded with fruits. There are fruits all over this tomato. It's incredibly productive. I could not get this kind of production out of a grow bag with an indeterminate in such a small space. So if you're a container gardener, definitely look into more determinate varieties. The second reason why determinate tomatoes are better than indeterminate tomatoes is all things considered, they are earlier tomatoes. And that all has to do with what the days to maturity on your tomatoes mean. Allow me to explain. If you're growing two tomatoes, one indeterminate tomato and one determinate tomato, and they are both 70 days to maturity, that means that approximately 70 days from your transplant date, you will have a ripe tomato on your plant. So in terms of the first ripe tomato, a 70 days to maturity indeterminate and determinate tomato should be about the same. However, that is where the similarities end. A determinate tomato tends to ripen all of their fruit at once over a very short time period. So that determinate tomato is basically going to ripen all of its crop over the next two to four weeks. So within a month, you should get all of the tomatoes on that plant ripe and ready for you to eat. The indeterminate tomato is not going to do that. Because the determinate tomato stops growing at a predetermined height, 
once it starts ripening its fruit, it no longer grows anymore. So 100% of that energy then goes into ripening the fruit. With the indeterminate tomatoes, they still put huge quantities of their energy into growing upward and putting on more green growth. So they take a very long time to ripen their crops. So although you may get that first tomato at the same exact time, you'll get all of the tomatoes on that determinate plant within the next couple of weeks, whereas that indeterminate is going to drag out the ripening process over months. So you're going to get much slower yields on your indeterminate tomatoes. And that brings me to my third point, production. Determinate tomatoes are much more productive than indeterminate tomatoes when it comes to square footage. So here is an indeterminate tomato, and while indeterminate tomatoes can be very productive in terms of fruit set, because they take so long to ripen their, their crop compared to a determinate tomato, you get very slow yields on your precious space. While your indeterminate tomatoes are busy putting energy into growing up and up and up, your determinate tomatoes are putting out huge quantities of fruit. So if you like to do things like you like to can your tomatoes, you want to make passata or tomato puree, if you want to can and jar salsa, if you want to save your tomatoes throughout the winter, indeterminate tomatoes are a terrible choice because they ripen so slowly. You want all of your tomatoes to come in at once for food storage. To do that, you want to grow determinate tomatoes because they are much more productive. And because your determinate tomatoes produce so quickly and then they tire out and they die back, you can have more seedlings waiting for you to succession plant in that same ground once the determinate tomatoes are done flushing and producing all of the ripe tomatoes. Meanwhile, you're still keeping your indeterminate tomatoes alive while they grow more and more foliage that you can't eat. So if you're doing any kind of food storage, determinate tomatoes absolutely crush indeterminates and productivity because you can turn over the crop faster and you get riper fruits faster so you can deal with larger quantities of tomatoes for canning and storage. And now for my fourth tip, which is probably my favorite reason for growing determinants and why I've taken such a shine to them lately, and that is disease resistance. I live on the immediate southeastern coast of North Carolina, and disease in my tomato garden runs rampant. It is a lot of work for me to spray these tomatoes and maintain them all year long so I can get a ripe crop out of my indeterminate tomatoes. Because it takes so long to mature the fruit, I have to spray them every single week to keep the plants healthy so I can get my fruit to mature and ripen and still taste good. Because the lifespan of determinate tomatoes are much shorter than that of indeterminate tomatoes, I'm able to get the crop pumped out and get all of the fruit ripened before significant disease sets in. So I don't have to spray my determinate tomatoes nearly as much as I have to spray my indeterminate tomatoes. I have to keep the indeterminate vines alive for usually four or five months to ripen everything that's on that plant. But with these, I can generally do it in about 100 days or so. So that saves me a ton of time and effort because generally I get my plants picked clean naturally before the really bad disease sets in and they die back naturally so I don't have to spray them nearly as much. I don't have to spend as much money and time on sprays. And that is a huge advantage for someone in a disease prone environment. If you live in a disease prone environment like I do, determinate tomatoes are a revelation in your garden because there's so much lower maintenance. And that brings me to my fifth and final point. And the fifth and final reason why determinate tomatoes are better than indeterminates is the maintenance. Indeterminate tomatoes, because they are a vine, require a lot of maintenance. They require large infrastructure. I am string trellising my indeterminate tomatoes right here because they get very tall. I've showed you how to do that in the past and I will make sure to link to that video above. But I've also uh, shown you how to stake them and to wire trellis them and other methods. And I will also make sure to link to above a playlist where I show you all the different ways to maintain and stake your indeterminate tomatoes. They require very large and tall infrastructure and they also require a ton of pruning. You have to maintain them because they will vine out in all different directions. Determinate tomatoes are totally different and require virtually no maintenance. I found that all you need to do to support determinate tomatoes because they're so small and bushy is the Florida weave method. All you need is some twine and some cheap wood stakes 
and then you interweave that twine and you're done and I'll make sure to link that video above because it is a revelation it's so easy to support your tomatoes versus larger trellises and stakes with indeterminate tomatoes you need to come out pretty much every single week to manage the growth of the tomatoes and remove the suckers and make sure that they aren't growing out of control and collapsing your infrastructure determinate tomatoes like this determinant right here are completely different you actually want to keep all of the suckers on your tomato plants because more suckers mean more potential flowers you also want to keep all of your leaves on the tomato plants because the leaves are the solar panels and you need those leaves to absorb as much solar energy as possible so the only thing that you have to prune off with determinate tomato plants are the immediate lowest growth that is basically growing against the ground because that becomes uh, susceptible to disease. So all you need to do to prune a determinate tomato is remove the stuff immediately on the ground. And I'm going to remove this one leaf that is on the ground as well. And that is it. The prune job on this tomato is done. I'm not going to have to do anything for the rest of the year unless something happens and we get a really bad windstorm and a part of the tomato breaks and I need to clean it up. Now compare that to an indeterminate tomato that I have to come out every few days and check on it. The only other thing I'm going to have to do with this determinate tomato plant is about every two weeks or so, I'm going to have to run another string uh, to support it and Florida weave it together. And as you can see, I'm already being rewarded by a thick cluster of fruit. So we're already in pretty good shape with this determinate tomato plant. I'm going to get a lot of production on it for very, very low maintenance. And again, this isn't a knock on indeterminate tomatoes. I still love growing indeterminates. They're a lot of fun and they have a wider variety of colors and shapes and lineages than determinate tomatoes do. So you definitely still want to grow indeterminates for the wow factor because they are exciting. My point is simply that at the end of the day, we grow tomatoes to eat tomatoes. So if you want lots of production, find some really good determinant varieties of flavors that you really enjoy. And there are some interesting and exciting varieties out there. And there's some strange shaped ones and there's some striped ones and there's heirloom ones. So you can get a good selection of interesting determinants as well, but you can have much faster crop turnover, much heavier production and less maintenance by growing the determinant. So I'm just suggesting to change the culture a little bit, grow more determinants than indeterminants, but still grow some exciting indeterminate varieties every single year. And before I end this video, one pro tip that I want to give you is to look into the Dwarf Tomato Project tomato plants. I've been promoting the Dwarf Tomato Project for a few years because of the incredible variety and the small nature of the plants. These plants are all of my determinants up front, but the ones back here are all Dwarf Tomato Project varieties. And the Dwarf Tomato Project plants all grow like a determinant in the, uh, in the vein that they only grow to be about 30 inches tall. However, the fruit ripen more like an indeterminate where you're not going to get the production all at once. But they're a really great way to grow really interesting heirloom quality and unique variety tomatoes that are as good as indeterminants and as exciting, but in a very small footprint. And they also tend to have really good production as well. Here you can see some pretty great production happening on one of my dwarf tomatoes. Here's another dwarf tomato that's showing a huge fruit cluster. And just because the plants are dwarf doesn't mean the fruit is. Most of the fruit is full size. You're going to get nice six to 10 ounce tomatoes and most of the dwarf tomatoes as well. So you can get really true indeterminate quality fruit on these really tiny plants. You can also prune the dwarf tomato projects just like a determinate. Just remove the lower leaves and then uh, leave the rest of the plants because they're going to top out really fast and they won't grow too much past 30 inches. And that right there are five reasons why determinate tomatoes like this Celeste variety right here are better for the typical gardener than indeterminate varieties. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like this. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Oh boy, Dale, it was really hot today, 91 degrees, way too hot to be sitting on the couch on a blanket. 
You want to be up on your elevated bed where there's more airflow. See, Dale, up here, we get to be underneath the fan. We get to stay nice and cool. Isn't it so nice and cool? It's so nice and cool up here. Say hi to everybody. Say hi, Dale. I'm going to stay nice and cool while we're asleep.